Huh? I met with her. I already knew what they were gonna say, and I didn't even flinch. Jackie just admitted something to you. Are you okay with that? Yes, I'm fine with it because because she wasn't bringing it. Oh, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We're not over the sprinkle cookies, but that's okay. Hey everybody, it's your girl Sherry. Welcome back to Alleged Actually Podcast. Thank you guys for tuning back in. I don't know about you guys, but today is Monday, which means it's Bravo Monday. And I know typically we've been doing Real Housewives of Orange County, but you guys, mm -mm. on today, this one's going to be about New Jersey, guys. That finale, it deserves its own recap. So I'll come back this week with a double dose of Real Housewives of Orange County, probably Friday. So look out for that video. Also, guys, really exciting. We just did a video last week with an exclusive interview with Cynthia Decker of 90 Day Fiance Pillow Talk and Lifetime's Double Divas. It was a really great, great interview. She was very candid about where she's been, what she's been up to. For all you TLC 90 Day Fiance fans, you need to check out that interview. If you haven't yet, the replay is posted. Go give it some love, guys. And before I get into this real quick recap, y'all, I want y'all to do me a favor and just go ahead and hit the thumbs up for me, okay? And if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. We're bringing you good content as always. And like, subscribe, share the whole nine. Okay, guys, we're going to get right into this recap because there's so much I want to talk about. The, the show opens up with a quick flashback, check in with everybody. What's most notable is... Marge and Jen Fessler, they're over at Marge's house and Marge is telling Jen about sending the funeral flowers to Teresa's house on the episode that aired last week where Teresa had the ladies over and she was telling them about, she had found out, had her attorney there, that she had found out that Margaret had been reaching out to Louie's ex and that she had been trying to take Louie down. Not a shocker. It wasn't this big. It was very anticlimactic, if you will. But y'all, it seems like the shining star of it all was those flowers that showed up at her house after she told the ladies. And it was a funeral flower arrangement from Margaret to Teresa and Louie saying, sorry for your loss of dignity, y'all. <laughs> Listen, that will go down in Bravo Housewife history because, honey, that... Margaret ate with that one. She did. Teresa didn't even bring it in the house. She sent it back with the floor saying, uh-uh, I don't want it. Forget it. She's disgusting. But listen, y'all, Margaret got her point across. She really did. So as much as I didn't really like Margaret this season, or for that matter, any of the ladies with all the bickering, the nastiness, the back and forth, I'm going to have to give it to Margaret Joseph. That's some housewife superhero stuff right there that was gonna go down in history we're gonna talk about that for a long long time so anyway at that same meeting or at the same gathering at marge's house here comes dolores y'all dolores comes over and marge just wants to know about this burn session because she heard about the gathering at Teresa's. she wanted to know what happened and dolores pretty much tells her what Teresa's attorney said about her talking to Louis X, and that was back in 2020. Marge admits that she didn't then, but since then she had. And so Marge tells Marge or Margaret tells her that she's DM'd her, but she hasn't really met her in person. And so at any rate, that doesn't validate what Bodito finds. And so Dolores is confused because she was like, if you didn't talk, how would you know that? So how would you know about the Bodito stuff if you didn't talk to her and all of this? And the timelines just aren't, aren't mathing. And Dolores is just kind of like confused. So she's, they keep panning to her in the confessional. And so then she's like, well, 
you know, that all goes back to the reunion review that they were going to have at Margaret's house. You know, the infamous when everybody was going to get together and devise their plan on how they were going to take Teresa and Louie down. And Dolores was like, well, thank you so much for not inviting me to that. And Margaret's like, what are you talking about? I told you about it. And y'all, that is when Patterson Dolores had entered the building. Y'all, you can see the vein popping out of her head, honey. She was like, you lying C word. I will not say it, y'all, because that to me is a low word. I don't use it. I'm not going to start. But the very low word that women are called sometimes is what she called her. And she didn't say it just once. She called her a lying C word. And they go back and forth for a while. Now, keep in mind, Jim Fessler is there, but y'all, listen. Jim was like a freaking statue. You hear me? She was like this. You could see her on the couch just kind of like, oh my gosh, what have I gotten myself into? Because Dolores was not having it. Do you hear me? And Margaret's like, what are you doing? What are you calling me? A lion C word. And she was like, yep, I'm calling you that because you're effing lion. I didn't say that. You did not tell me. We didn't have that con conversation. Y'all, it goes back and forth and back and forth. Dolores maintains that she was not told anything. She says on her kid's life she wasn't. So y'all, I'm gonna have to believe Dolores. I know that a lot of people think that the intensity behind it was because she was so mad that Marge was trying to like put her in the mix of those that were trying to take Teresa and Louie down, that she was somehow involved and, and she maintains that she wasn't. And I think Marge even tried to downplay and saying like, yeah, I did tell you about it, but I was like, I know you wouldn't want to come. And she was like, oh, no, no, I'm not giving you none of that. We didn't have that conversation. And y'all, I thought it was about to go to blows because Dolores, whoo, listen, now I know all about Miss Patterson Dolores, y'all. We got a chance to meet her Sunday night, okay? At any rate, Jim Fessler finally gets them to take a breath. They calm down. Somehow, honey, they come back down to Zendum and they hug it out. So they get past it, Okay. <laughs> we leave from Margaret's and then we go over to Danielle's and she fills in Melissa and Rachel on what went down over at Teresa's because Danielle was actually there. And so she lets them know that Melissa has her attorney there and that she also finds out that it was Marge that had reached out to Louis' ex. And then Melissa was like, okay, but I mean, this said ex reached out to all of us. She was like, I mean, this one even sent DMs. She was like, and not just the ex, anybody associated with Louis was reaching out to all of us. She was like, DMs, emails, certified letters. She even talks about a time when she was at a restaurant on the shore where she was approached by Louis's niece. And Louis's niece told her, hey, you should be very, very afraid. This was his niece by his first marriage, y'all. So Melissa's like, okay, so that's no news. I mean, this chick was trying to talk to all of us. So none of them are phased. I actually don't think any of them are phased. And then Danielle goes on to tell Rachel and Melissa, no, but listen, Teresa's really stressed. I mean, like, she's literally 90 pounds soaking in wet. And Rachel's like, yeah, she 90 pounds because of the Ozempic, not because of stress. Shade, y'all, shade. Rachel lets up not on Miss Teresa. Y'all can say what you want to about Rachel Fuda. You know, I think she was a good uh, addition to New Jersey. I mean, we're going to talk about the future New Jersey because it, it's not looking that bright. But... Dag on, Rachel held her own with Teresa. Not a back down moment, honey. She played not. So I'm going to give it to her. So, but Daniel lets the ladies know, look, you know, really, she's a shell of herself. Seriously. She literally has gotten no peace from this situation. Her children are a wreck. It's just, it's really bad. And so 
they talk about they're getting ready to now do the Last Supper. And this is an idea that Dolores had, Jen Fessler had, that all the ladies should come together for a meal and just bring it all out on the table. Everybody gets a chance to say their side and get it all out and go from there. And so then Rachel asked Danielle, does she think that she'll be able to reconcile with Jen Aiden? And she was like, you know, yeah, you know, I think so. She was like, at one point, I was a really good friend of Jen Aiden. I really listened to her and I really cared for her. And Danielle says that she has lots to say. And Melissa was like, well, unlike you, honey, I have nothing to say. Literally nothing. Like, I guess Melissa is kind of at the point, guys, where she said all she's going to say. Her and Teresa have pretty much decided that it's a wrap. And she's not coming with a whole lot to say it said last supper. Then we do a quick little segue to Danielle and her husband, Nate, where they're talking about Danielle is going to reach out to her father. So y'all like all season and you know, I haven't been recapping New Jersey. I started off and then I was like, yeah, guys, I I'm not liking how this season is shaping up. So I'm not going to recap. So I kind of fell back, but I always did tell you I was coming back and doing the finale. But I, I did watch off and on and I did know that Danielle throughout this season and some of the last season has struggled with the lack of relationship with her father we don't have a whole lot of backstory on why their relationship is so estranged other than very vaguely something went down and the father took her brother's side and because of that they have not spoken it sounds very petty y'all and you can certainly see because nate is still close to her father so he maintains his relationship but in this moment Danielle decides that she's going to reach out to her father herself and text him. And, you know, all season, she's wanted him, her dad, to show up for the do her kids. Um, they had a kids bop video they did. Her daughter was in New York Fashion Week with her bougie kids. There were milestones and things and events that she was really looking forward to her father lending his support. And because of their rift, there would be an excuse of why her father couldn't make it. You know, I'm a proponent of family just getting over their stuff and making up. I just believe life is too short. So I hate, that's one of the things I really hate about um, New Jersey because what I did love so much about Real Housewives of New Jersey was their sense of family, was their reverence for family, is their reverence for marriage, how they don't play about their husbands, and we'll get to that you know, how they invest in their children. And so I hate to see so many broken um, families and stories about not speaking to this one and that one. I, I find that to be hard to watch. But anyway, we wrap that up. She does send a little nice message to her father and we don't find out whether or not he responds, but that's, that's at least she's made the effort, right? And so now we get over to everybody that's preparing for this Last Supper because this is the crust of what we're going to talk about because that's the whole point of the show, guys. So Mars, she's getting ready for the Last Supper. Jen Aiden is. Rachel is. Rachel says she's going for the mob look, and indeed she does. Dolores picks a dress that Polly had bought her from Paris, and he's like, are you really going to wear that to like a UFC fight? It was a nice dress. Come on, like, Polly. I, I don't know. We know Dolores is Switzerland, but if Patterson Dolores was going to make a, a appearance, good Lord, I would have saved my Paris dress too. At any rate, that's what she chooses to wear. So then we hop over to Teresa and Louie. She also knows about this Last Supper. She's kind of letting Louie in on, you know, she's going to be there. And the fact that She's going to confront Margaret. And I don't know about you guys, but that scene, you could just literally see with the viciousness that Louis was talking to her about. You know, you make sure you tell Margaret that you hope she suffers the way that she's made me and this family suffer. And just so much vitriol and it's just venom that he's spitting. And honestly, in that scene, you could really see where Teresa was tired. And now I see the source of her stress. 
You might think it's Margaret, but it seems like it's Louis. Y'all, he seems like a hot, hot mess. There are so many things in the blogs about Louis and some of his illegal doings in business. It's like her and Joe all over again. Look, Teresa, like her, hate her, whatever. I mean, if you are a real New Jersey fan, then you've been rocking with Teresa in some capacity from day one. She's been on from day one. She's an OG of the Real Housewives of New Jersey and has been through an awful lot. One would just hope that she would have found her happy ending. It is not looking like it. I don't think Louie's it, y'all. Y'all put in the comments what you think. I mean, this man seems to be dragging her down again. She looks so stressed, but you know, Teresa, she's loyal. And so she's like, you're right. Um, I'm going to definitely, you know, confront her. Um, the truth is going to be coming out. You know, all bets are off. Uh, I'm, I'm coming for it. And then you go over and you see Marge with Joe Benino, her husband. And Marge, y'all, this was another classic moment. She calls Jackie, Jackie Judas Goldschneider. That's classic. I mean, she is very, very angry with Jackie. And she basically is letting him know that she is coming out swinging at this Last Supper that she will be heard and Jackie will be exposed. And she did not lie. So then you see um, a flashback of Teresa and Joe. Um, it's really sad. You watch them as siblings with their, with their parents and they go over to Melissa and Joe and Joe is wearing the watch his father left him and Y'all, see, that's the part that really, really bothers me. You know, the two of them, they are each other's only siblings. They're basically, of their immediate family, all they have left outside of, of course, spouses and children. But what a shame, y'all. What a literal shame. I hate that because you know in the core of their gut, they both love each other so much. It's just stubbornness culturally maybe you know an old school Italian like Joe said about Teresa look she's not gonna admit anything she's not gonna like when Melissa tells Joe what she found out from Danielle about how Melissa had been suffering and oh I'm sorry when Melissa told Joe what Danielle said about Teresa how Teresa had been suffering losing the weight her kids are stressed she's stressed and he was like you know if it's true Teresa's old school Italian and she's never, ever going to admit it. And in this true standing, there's a lot of that in Joe. I, I, well, I take it back. I really think that Joe would reconcile with his sister if she would extend an olive branch of some sort. Every time that he and Melissa has tried, it does appear that it'll be okay for a while. But the minute that he doesn't do something that Teresa likes, it's she washes her hands of him and he's just really hurt, guys. And so, um, I, there's always hope, you know, as long as the two people are still here on earth, you know, I hope they patch it up. It may be that we don't know the fate of Real Housewives of New Jersey, but if they, they do recast or reboot and they all have to take a break from filming that off screen, they find a way to repair their relationship. But part of that was Melissa's one ditch effort of talking to her husband and saying, listen, are you really okay when I go to this last supper, if I'm really done with your sister? And just for a split second, guys, we kind of had some hope. Like, I don't know, was it just me? Or did you see that there was a little turmoil in there? Like Joe was kind of struggling with admitting then that, no, I'm fine, I'm done. Let me know in the comments, guys, if you felt that because he said to Melissa, no, no, she's hurt me so many times. And he goes in and talks about the thing with um, Louie and the, the pizza business where they stole that idea. Um, there were other things that she did, the Bo Deedle thing, having him investigate it. Um, he just, and then the rumors that they put out there about Melissa cheating on him. He's just, at this point, he's hurt. And he, he says to Melissa, I'm okay with you being done. I think I'm just washing my hands of it. So 
Now we're over at Rail's Steakhouse. And this is the restaurant where we saw in the opening of the season, which was just a foreshadowing of what we finally got to see Sunday night. This is where the Last Supper would take place. Ironically, guys, this is where they had to sit down many seasons ago with Jacqueline Larita. They do a flashback with that as well. So this place has a little history. And for that reason, Dolores picked it, honey, because she thought the energy of the restaurant would help them, will bring them peace. Um, and so at that rate, but Dolores comes up in there, honey, in her black dress. It's it's laced out in the front. She looks she looks banging. Jen Fessler is next. She arrives. She comes in with a white blazer on. Not as um rocking the black like Dolores. And then Dolores tells Jen Fessler she cares about everybody and she wants them to get things off their chest civilly. So next to arrive is Rachel. And she sticks to what she said, guys. She comes like she's fresh out the mom, honey. All blacked out with that black fur. Yes, Fuda. Yes, 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 yes. She was giving very much mob wives, okay? And next up was Danielle, who also came in the black. She looked good. Then Melissa comes bopping down, ready to do her thing and arrive at the restaurant. But she has on brown. I love those boots too, y'all. I mean, I'm not trying to get sidetracked on the fashions, but the boots were giving. She had on brown and then she had like a cream and gray sweater over that. And then um, Margaret comes through in all black. And there's a quick little flashback throughout of Margaret with the flashback of Teresa coming after Jackie about her husband, Evan, cheating and all that little stuff. So in between that little flashback, Jackie slips in and she's now at the restaurant as well. Also donned in all black. And then Jennifer Aiden comes in, but honey, she is Versace down. Ma'am comes in in brighter colors, red in the center, a little gold, you know, very, very Versace. It's a Versace um, long sleeve dress and it's giving what Versace gives. So at this point, you know, there is a seating chart and everyone is pretty much there. Teresa is the last to arrive and she does so also in black attire. And she's doing so black with a little white waistband and a Chanel top child. She was, she was giving Chanel. And so when Teresa comes in and all is, everyone is sitting, she's like, I am not sitting across from her. And she's talking about Margaret. And Margaret, because there's some food on the table now, they've gotten some drinks. So those that are there are already starting to, you know, partake. And she's like, because if I sit there, you'll be wearing that. Basically, Margaret's just like, grow up. Teresa moves her seat. No biggie at this point. And so at this point now, Dolores and Jen Fessler get up. They're at the end of the table and they let everybody know while we're here, they're here to air out their differences in, you know, a civil manner. Everybody was going to be heard. So she, they will call out who is to talk when. They will let them do that. Jen Fessler is like, we're going to talk to each other with respect. And those two are going to serve as the moderators. And Dolores says, the only time you're going to see me step in is when I feel like the points have been made. And like, it's basically like it's time to move on. So everybody's understanding why they're here. And Jen and Danielle are the first ones to have the floor. So Danielle says she wants to have this conversation where she can actually verbalize. And Jen Aiden's like, oh, that would be nice if you're capable of it. Y'all, let me just say this, Okay. I'm going to get back to it, but Jen Aiden, y'all, she was really a below the belt somebody, y'all. She's got a mouth on her, and with the way this season went and her antics throughout the season and her antics behind the scenes, I think it's time for Jen Aiden to be either put on pause or goodbye. Sincerely, I am not joking, y'all. I think I've had my fill of Jen Aiden. I really do. It's time for her to go. Bye. Bye. At any rate, well, Danielle goes right back into the charity event, y'all. And I don't know why it bothered her so bad on 
what Jennifer said about her and the event, but it did. And I mean, part of it is, I guess, your integrity that's being in question. Jen maintains that Danielle treats people like trash. <clears throat> that's her thing. She doesn't like the way she treats people. And then I'm like, dude, isn't that kind of like pot calling kettle here? Because Jen Aiden can be very nasty as well. However, that's what she's maintaining. And Danielle says, look, $2,500 came out of me and Nate's pocket to add to the fact of the $25,000 that we raised. Um, she said she planned a beautiful dinner for her, meaning for Jennifer Aiden, and that that $600 tip came out of her pocket. And then she said the private cars that picked her up came out of the budget. And then that's where Jennifer hops in and is like, yep, and that's my point. You know, you, it came out of the budget. You didn't pay for it. And she says, like, I realize that you do everything for everybody for free because you can't afford it. I get it. At this point, y'all, that was low too. Because Jennifer Aiden clearly has more money than Danielle. Okay, we, we can see that. We know that. Her husband's a plastic surgeon and has his own practice and all of that. Um, they definitely have more wealth. That was nasty and that was low. And you pan over to Melissa and Rachel and they're talking like, okay, now they're talking money. This is effed up. And she says, you can have whatever you want, but if you're not humble with it, it really doesn't mean ish. And my assumption was they were, they were directing that at Jennifer Aiden. And so then Jennifer Aiden comes back, like I said, and tells Danielle, you basically treat people like trash. And she says, and I get it, Danielle, you want my life. And then Danielle's like, I want nothing that you have. I mean, she's like, you have 18 bathrooms and yet your home is empty. My house is full. She's like, Jennifer's like, empty. My house is full of love. And Jen A says that people just don't, that <laughs> she, y'all, that's what I'm saying. This, this girl hit below the belt, but she basically tells Danielle that people that don't talk to their family need to find family in their friends. In other words, you already are estranged from your family. You might want to try to be a better friend. Y'all. Ugh. And then Danielle says Jen is sad and she knows that she cries alone at home and says, you know, she couldn't touch what she has with the long pole. And Jackie hops in and says, look, why don't we just move on? Like this is going nowhere. And Dolores agrees, but then Jen starts laughing at Danielle and calls her a clown. And Danielle says, you know what? I go home every night, night to my husband and he's there waiting for me. And she goes, yeah, your husband with the boobs. <sighs> she was like, and you have the brawn, honey. And that's when y'all, that's when Danielle lost it and she launched at Jen. And apparently, guys, what we didn't see, because it was more to that little lunge towards her than what actually aired. It is alleged in those Bravo streets, honey, that Danielle launched a glass pitcher at her and that it broke. And then um, it didn't it didn't cut her or anything, but it broke on a salad plate and all of this splashed up on her and her clothing that it was a lot more vicious than what we saw. Some people ask, why did they cut it? I don't know. Um, I guess, look, we've seen enough from Potomac and some of the other fights that have gotten out of hand. Perhaps they wanted to get ahead of it. We do. We did see the producer come in and basically tell Danielle she had to go. And based off of what we saw, I thought that was a bit much. So now it makes sense that there was more to that scene than what actually aired. Um, but they did step in. Dolores kind of got Danielle and, and, you know, they, they convinced her to go to the bathroom to take a breather because Danielle did not want to leave. Rachel went and then Teresa followed. So there's a moment where they're out from the private room where they had, uh, the table set up for their last supper. And Danielle is just like, you know, I, I just, I lunged at her because Do Dolores was like, well, why did you do that? And she was basically like, look, I lunged at her because I know this would hurt Nate so much. You know, what she said. And they're all understanding. Um, and Teresa's like, well, yeah, how do you think I feel when Marge kept coming for Louie? She's like, hey, this is not about you. This is not about you. 
child and then she turned into like she was looking a lot like Dolores from Patterson and that and I was like okay Danielle got some stuff with her too child like she don't play and that face that vein no ma'am so basically Teresa was like okay I didn't say it was about me I'm saying that you know you don't have to get violent child she was trying to make it about her in that moment but Danielle was not having it so they all go with her towards the bathroom there's a <laughs> the camera pans to Teresa, Teresa standing there alone just kind of like okay so <clears throat> child meanwhile back in the private room where the table is Jen Aiden is still going um but anyway when they they before they even get to that they cut back to Teresa and Melissa going at it and Melissa's like you know this is this is this is you this this is you're the queen of this stuff you're the queen of this ish and she's like f you y'all there were so many f bombs going on may I add that night I mean it was a f you f you f and this f f f I was like good lord the child Teresa, Teresa was just looked at Melissa and was like f you and she was like no f you and she was like, you know, they learn from the best. They learned this mess from you. And she's talking about Danielle and Jennifer, the way it went low, and then the whole luncheon thing, the violent attempt. And she, Melissa, basically then calls Teresa White trash. Whereas then Teresa retorts back and calls her a whore. And y'all, it just it becomes more of the same. And she was like, yeah, she was like, okay. And so she's like, yeah, basically my brother married a whore. Ugh. So Rachel's screaming for them to stop. It's just getting nasty. It's just literally going nowhere, y'all. It was the dinner from hell, the lunch from hell, if you will. These ladies didn't come to solve anything, okay? So again, the whole thing with... Danielle went back in the restroom. Dolores is talking to her and just basically saying, calm down, calm down. She's like, I am, I am, I'm trying. Because Danielle's just heated, you know. One thing about the ladies in Jersey, they don't play about their husbands, honey. They don't. Now, I'm a North Carolinian. I don't play about mine either. But New Jersey is notorious. You do not come for the husbands. You do not come for the children. You just don't come for the family, period. But particularly, they don't play about their husbands. Mm-mm. Jen A is still going on talking about her husband has man boobs and, you know, Fuda tells Danielle to go to the bathroom and dry her eyes. Well, we already talked about that. At this point, she's in the bathroom and we talked about the moment that she had with Melissa. And y'all, <laughs> so Jen A is still talking about Danielle because Danielle has not returned back to the table yet. And she's saying, you know, it's just taking me back to my cheerleader days. It's giving. Danielle is aggressive. Um, and then she goes into chant. She's aggressive. Y'all, I used to be a cheerleader. So I was like right in there. She's aggressive. She, she's aggressive. Ciao. Jen A, you was wrong for that. Listen. Woohoo. Anyway, at this point, because of the level of toxicity, Jen Fessler decides, y'all, I got to go. She's like, I'm leaving. And they were like, whoa, you're a moderator. How are you going to leave? And she's like, listen, I don't do this. This is just too, to such a level of toxicity. It's just, it's disgusting. And so we go to her confessional and she's like, y'all, in my world, you either, if you smash glass, you're going to either smash glass or break bread. In her world, the two do not come together. So at that point, once Danielle had, just like I said, we didn't see it, but it happened. When she had smashed that glass pitcher in the direction of Jen Aiden, Fessler was like, I'm out of here. That's more than I can do. And so Dolores asked Jen after... Danielle has calmed down if it's okay that Danielle comes back to the table and you know she asks her if she feels comfortable and Jen basically says look at this point she's digging her own grave and she don't bother me none and she was like she can come back y'all like I said Jen A was on one okay so 
Dolores goes and gets her. And then Jen says that Jen A, who is still running her mouth, y'all, because she is notorious for that mouth. You, if you've seen her on Watch What Happens Live, Andy can never get a word in. So that's her thing, right? She just tells everybody, look, I'm I'm not bothered by her. You know, look, all y'all came dressed for a funeral. I came dressed for a party. You know, everybody's in black. I've got my, you know, my party dress on it. And Melissa's like, uh-uh, no, ma'am, I am not in black. You, you see the ensemble here. So she was like, but let me just sit myself down in all of my whoreness. <laughs> y'all, it was crazy. She was like, I'm just going to, I'm a whore, right? So I'm just going to sit on down here and, and sit up down here in my whoreness. It was a lot, y'all. It was a lot. It was a lot. Okay? So, <laughs> when Danielle comes back, they let Dolores and her know. Jen Fessler is gone. And they're like, what? And Teresa's like, yeah, because Margaret is such a vile friend. Okay? Marge laughs. So, Dolores is like, okay, at this point, Teresa, do you have something you want to say? And she's like, I really have nothing to say. And Marge is like, well you know exactly what she's been doing. And Teresa's like, you know, I had five women come to my house and I showed them in black and white the facts because I go in facts. And Margaret's like, I do too. I also like to <laughs> go off of facts. And she says, you know, in March of 2022, after she spoke with Laura, y'all, and Laura was... Margaret's ex-best friend that Teresa and Jen had reached out to trying to get dirt on Margaret it was after that Margaret says is when she reaches out to Louis' ex and Dolores in the confessional is like wait a minute now that's a different story see now that's not what she told her when she was at the house when Dolores went back to Patterson and almost gave Margaret those hands and so Dolores is like what are you doing and so Teresa's like, you are lying, honey. She's not doing this anymore because she's lying. She's like, I'm not even going to entertain Margaret. She's lying. Teresa said, I proved that you were wrong because you got subpoenaed in 2021. So like, how would you get subpoenaed in 2021 for talking to his ex? You didn't even show up. If you didn't talk to her, why didn't you just come to court and say, you know, we never had a conversation. And Teresa has a point. And so... Then it goes on to the smear campaign. They talk about how Margaret had organized the review recap at the home, how they were going to get together and take down Louie at the reunion. And Margaret's like, nope, you had your own smear campaign against me. And Louie had that, you know, having us investigated the whole nine. And so there's more back and forth. And so... She's like, no, nah, you were trying to destroy Louis. And Teresa says, that's why you married a plumber. Because now, you know, we're doing low blows. <laughs> and she's like, yep, I sure did. I love to F that plumber. Talking about her husband, Joe Benino. Rachel's like, what is wrong with being with a plumber? Y'all, the whole thing was so ridiculous. And then Marge says, look, your father was a cobbler. And then she's like, F you. There's more of the FUs hurled back and forth. There's more um, insults. Rachel still wants to know what's wrong with marrying a plumber or being with a plumber. And then we get into, so they're like, hey, stop it. Janae's like, stop it. Stop, stop you two. And then Rachel comes to her and like, hey, she was like, you know, why don't you keep my husband's F name out your mouth? And she calls her hot dog lips. And Margaret chimes in with another thing, Chad. And Jen asks that Teresa listen. Because maybe Margaret does have something that's relevant to say. Now, before we get into what Margaret has to say, there was a lot of back and forth between Jennifer, I'm sorry, Teresa and Rachel about the fact that, you know, you keep talking about my husband. And she's like, you talked about my husband first. And she's like, you know, um, you talked about mine and Rachel's like, keep my husband's effing name out your mouth. And she's like, you know, you did it first. So there was back and forth there. And the reason that I even come back to that is because I wanted to say how Rachel maintained her stance. And y'all, she really wasn't backing down to Teresa at all. You know, everybody has their side. But you'll notice that 
they don't come with the same vitriol. Honey, Rachel is here for it. She is here for it with Teresa. She is not playing a from my husband. You keep my husband's name out of your mouth. So there's that. And so Margaret chimes in and again, she's like, I'm going to make my point. So <laughs> she was like, Jackie's, this is when Margaret reveals that Jackie is the one that had Louis' ex at her house. At this point, Jackie's screaming, it's not true, it's not true. No, no, it's not true. And <clears throat> she said the last week, she didn't have this information until last week, the week prior to this particular sit down. She said that the ex, she had called the ex because she was trying to get intel on what is it that Teresa would have to talk about with the five ladies that she had at her house. Like, what was that about? And his ex wanted to have a rundown of who was all there. And so when she got to Jackie Goldschneider's name, she was like, okay, why would she be there when I was at her house years ago? Bingo! And then Margaret, so then there's a flashback. And then Margaret says, now, granted, this was on the heels of Jackie being so mad at you because of the rumor you had out there about Evan cheating. And she was like, you know, there's, she asked Louise esque you know, can you give me timeline and screenshots of the first time that you spoke with Jackie? And she was like, yeah, and she actually did. So y'all, it was February 25th of 2021. And that makes sense. Okay. And so Melissa admits that that's true because she's sure there's proof. Well, she tells I'm sorry, y'all. Melissa tells Jackie, go ahead and admit it's true if it's true because she knows that Margaret's got proof. At this point, y'all, it's one of those climatic moments, almost like when Monica on Salt Lake City admitted that she was um, the Von Teese chick, the reality Von Teese, because she then turns to Teresa and says, it's true. Y'all, the mouse dropped open. Listen, y'all. I couldn't have, now, this wasn't a redeeming thing. Granted, for all we went through this season, Jackie was the one behind it, or allegedly. And she says, I did meet with her. And Teresa was like, huh? And she was like, yeah, I, I, I met with her. Everyone's mouth drops open, y'all. That was crazy. And she proceeds to say, you know, at this point, we hated each other. And she's like, I, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to mess things up. But she, I, at this point, I'm glad it's out because I was nervous it was going to come out anyway. And, and so I'm glad it's out. And Margaret says everything that came out was from Jackie. At this point, Jackie keeps yelling, shut up, to shut up. And in a confessional, she says it was February 2021. This is Jackie. That season opened up with Teresa, you know, saying where there's smoke, there's fire, concerning the rumor about her husband, Evan, and cheating. And she's like, y'all, the world was abuzz and weighing in on whether or not Evan cheated on me. And she said, Teresa and Jen were digging, trying to find women that would come out and say that they had affairs with him. They were trying to get women to get pictures of themselves that, you know, anything they could dig up to prove that Evan cheated on her. And she's like, so when Louis' ex gave her this information to put in her pocket, she did. And so... That way, she said, if Teresa was going to say something about her husband, then she would have something to say about hers. And y'all, it's not like we don't understand that because we totally do. Um, at this point, Margaret calls her an effing snake. And, you know, Danielle is like gagging and confessional, like, oh my gosh, y'all, this whole time it was Jackie. Listen, it was crazy, y'all. And Marge says this was before the Warrior video came out. And Marge tells Teresa they subpoenaed the wrong B, y'all. And so Marge swears on her son that she had nothing to do with it. And Jackie's still in Teresa's ear pleading her case, y'all. And it's like Marge maintains it wasn't her and that it was Jackie that leaked stuff to the bloggers. And Dolores says, Teresa, Jackie just admitted something to you because Teresa was just kind of like, oh, okay. Like you got nothing from Teresa. And everybody's like, whoa, how was that cool with you? And the idea was, y'all, 
because Dolores tried to get her to focus. Like she just admitted it was her. Did you hear her? And she's like, yeah, but you know, Teresa goes in confessional and says, look, I, I get it. I know why she did it. We were in a bad place. She thought I brought this rumor up about Evan to hurt her. And honestly, y'all, I really didn't do it to hurt her. Girl, yes, you did. Yes, you did. You did do it to hurt her. And for some reason, Jackie was really, oh God, torn up about it because y'all, I don't know because it never really came full circle, but it seemed to really destroy her and hurt her. I don't know if there really had been rumors out there or they really had issues in their marriage with infidelity, but that was, that was a very low point for Jackie. It even caused her to reevaluate her issues with her eating disorder. And it was a, it was a rough season for her. So no, <clears throat> it's not far-fetched that Jackie was the one behind it. It's not far-fetched that Jackie would have wanted something to fight with or that she was going to try to bring Teresa down for doing that. So, but what is shocking is that Jackie held that close all this time, particularly when this season she flip-flopped and became friends with Teresa, knowing all of this, knowing that with all of the drama that it very well was going to come out, y'all. It was shocking. You know, everybody's angry. Melissa's mad. Like, you can't get past sugar cookies, but you're cool with Jackie, you know, going and talking to Louise X. It, make it make sense. And Jen is like, well, you know, Sometimes Teresa has delayed responses. We've all seen the whole when somebody says pay attention and when the, the whole table flipped when she was like, wait, did she just? She was like, I am paying attention. And then when it all comes back, that's when she hits the table and flips it. So yes, Teresa is the queen of delayed reactions. I'll give you that, Janae. But I think honestly, guys, as long as she still has her sights set on Margaret, she won't deal with Jackie right away. I think that she still is so angry at Margaret that she's given Jackie a pass. And that was basically co-signed by Dolores, who was on Watch What Happens Live. So y'all, pretty much at this point, things are over. Um, Melissa and Margaret and Rachel get up to leave. And Dolores and... Jen Aiden, Teresa are still behind. And, you know, Jen is like, you know, A for effort, Dolores, on trying. But we basically have resolved nothing. And so it comes to an end, y'all. And we don't even know if this is end of a season or end of a show. Because there's so much speculation out there. And I'm going to tell you what Dolores' last words were on the episode, which to me are very foreshadowing. But it's been stated that Andy had said now he's looking to reboot just like New, New York. Then he kind of backpedaled a bit. And so there will be some shakeup of change of some sort. But what it will be, we don't know yet. Dolores basically ends it with this. She says, how did it all come to this? It came out of really just people don't know how to stop hating. It just built up and everybody cut so deep. It's so toxic. She looks at the sit down like a death. And y'all, and just like that, that's it. Maybe she's right. Maybe this is the end of the Real Housewives in New Jersey. Weigh in on the comments, guys. Let me know what you thought of the episode. It was epic. Y'all, it was the finale that they foreshadowed it to be. Some crazy moments, some shocking highlights. Who are you like maddest at the table? Jen, Jackie, Teresa, who? Put it in the comments. Please, y'all, let me know what you thought. It was a lot. I will be back later in the week to drop my recap of Real Housewives of Orange County, y'all. We've got an interview coming up on the second part of the Design Your Wealth Mindset series, so stay tuned for that. And make sure you come back Wednesday for the recap on 90 Day Fiance Single Life, or I'm sorry, 90 Day Fiance The Other Way with myself and Big Nige. So make sure you come back. Y'all, it was great. Thanks for tuning in. Please put in the comments what you thought. I want to hear from you guys. All right, guys, have a blessed day. Come back Wednesday. Bye.